Here we go, everybody. So we'll be fast here. So to be chef, please, you know, I'm going to start with kind of how do you obtain the reduction, right? Uh, the uh, key, key point, nails do not reduce fractures, okay? Don't get lulled into that. You can use manual traction. You can use distractors, X fixes, traction setups, joysticks, but I, they rarely bring me joy, I find. Uh, blocking or polar screws and percutaneous reduction with clamps are all, are all options. Um, but there can be disadvantages of these. You may not have enough skilled hands with you or the skilled hands to help do some of these techniques and still put, in, put a uh, fixation device on. Uh, you may not have some of the equipment um, or uh, you may use those techniques and still end up with an inadequate reduction. So you should still have a backup plan in case these other great options don't work. Um, so what are some next options? Well, um, you know, if you get stuck with uh, other fractures, uh, we have no problem putting incisions on forearms to uh, reduce those fractures, right? So um, uh, analogous is the tibia and fibula, and we've been taught the, the dogma that you can never open these injuries, and I would, I would challenge that. So um, you can do open reductions with small bone reduction forceps. You can respect the soft tissues, and you can get really uh, nice anatomic reductions. Um, it does make the case much easier when it's already lined up once you do that work. And in my setting where I have very few PAs or residents with me, um, it, uh, it helps me have an extra pair of hands to be able to still uh, uh, serve the patients who, uh, who can't present with, the, with these injuries. Um, I tend to use a, a small reduction clamp like you see here on the, uh, on the screen here. Uh, usually make an incision over the anterior, just lateral to the tibial crest. Um, and it can be longer depending upon the, the situation. You can kind of, I usually use the anterior crest and the medial face of to, down to the corner of the, of the shaft um, to help read that, to know that I've got the reduction. Um, and if you have more of a transverse pattern, potholes are a really good thing to use. Um, and I typically use two or three clamps at different angles. Uh, typically there's some spiraling of these injuries or an oblique quality to them. And so this helps maintain the reduction while you're reaming and then placing uh, the nail if you're doing a, a uh, intramedullary technique. So the first patient is a 74 year old female, very Pacific Northwest. She's 74 and is snow skiing down the black diamonds of one of the cascades and uh, uh, crashes and has a uh, 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 fractures her, her left side or right side here. Um, it's a closed injury, no surprises here, no fracture blisters. Um, she's a really healthy lady. She looks much younger than stated age and has this distal third uh, complex uh, tibia shaft fracture with a uh, uh, fibula shaft fracture. The hardware you see there is uh, uh, from years ago when she had an uh, ankle fracture in the past. Um, and so this would be really challenging to try to hold, to uh, try to put a nail in either percutaneously or um, might, might straighten out a little bit with, uh, with a distractor on um, or maybe an X-fix might work. Um, but these would all have... Uh, some disadvantages to them. Um, I, I was able to use my technique for um, this technique here, um, using three or four clamps to get the reduction. Um, it is a little bit of extension here on the lateral, but I felt it was acceptable given the uh, severity of the injury. Um, and we're able to, a 12 month follow up, she is super happy, is back to skiing, and has a fully healed fracture. So um, you know, you're not condemning folks to having a non-union because you looked at the fracture. If you respect the soft tissues and close well, um, that will that will help. That's the second patient, a uh, 55-year-old female. She was crossing street in downtown Olympia and got hit by a car. She had a right leg injury and also had uh, neck pain. Uh, so she uh, had a C-spine fracture along with the uh, open tibia fracture. Uh, the really fun part was that on her contralateral leg, uh, she had a blown knee amputation. So really we're interested in limb salvage at this point, uh, making sure that it works. Um, and that she has multiple wounds, um, each about one to two to three centimeters in size over the medial aspect of her injured leg. And that she has a segmental a tibia kind of extending in the proximal third um, uh, with some other, uh, with a proximal fibula fracture. No surprises, she doesn't have any distal pathology. She doesn't have a chance to kind of line it up. Um, she um, I, I mixed patterns on this one with the, for the complexity. So using a uh, unicortical plate and a clamp and then two clamps distally and able to pass the nail. We're able to um, uh, you know, get, get a fully healed uh, fracture here. She was uh, happy, um, didn't require any flaps, didn't require 
any special uh, plastics coverage or anything like that. So um, you can use open if you respect the soft tissues and uh, preserve them. You can you can get good good outcomes in these in these complex cases using uh, a technique. So quick summary: you got to achieve length, alignment, and rotation. Don't compromise on the reduction. Opening doesn't condemn the fracture. Do what works in your setting. And surgeons don't let surgeons do this, okay? So this is why we take all the time to put these talks together and wanna to try to help educate as much as possible. This was a recent referral. This is a person who's nine months out. Uh, the starting point's a little suspect to me, was never really reduced and uh, was just kind of left like this. So this is a much harder problem to manage than if you just kind of reduced it to start. So, um, so thou shalt not bear us is uh, what I remember from residency. So, <laughs> um, so uh, we'll, I'll stop there.